Hi there, my name is Dan. I'm a master's student in computer engineering and I love making sounds with computers. This is my new video tutorial series where I'm going to be showing you how audio DSP algorithms work and how digital signal processing forms audio effects and synthesizers. In this first part of the tutorial series, we're going to be making a sine wave oscillator. Sine wave oscillators are really important because they're the foundation for all kinds of synthesizer waveforms, the foundations for modulation effects such as chorus and flanger and phaser. Uh, they're used in LFOs and other modulation sources and all kinds of other things. In this part, we're going to be making a little audio tone that sounds something like this. That's a one kilohertz sine wave at the sample rate 44.1 kilohertz, which is the standard for many audio systems. You'll see that using GNU Octave, it's very easy to make an example script like this in only four lines of code. You don't need to have a background in programming in order to follow along with these examples, but it might help to have a background in music technology. If you have a general idea of how computers represent sound using samples, or how audio effects work, you'll probably be right at home during the series. My goal is to give you just the basics so that you don't have to study a bunch of calculus in order to understand these concepts. And a lot of them are pretty simple, and you should be able to catch on. Like I mentioned, I'm going to be using GNU Octave to teach these lessons. It's a scientific computing environment based on the commercial MATLAB application. Octave is great because it's more scientific than Max MSP or Pure Data, and it'll get us closer to the DSP algorithms. It's going to be a great environment for running DSP algorithms offline, so you can later learn C++ and create real-time implementations. While I know many of you want to learn this stuff in C++, C++ is pretty challenging and unforgiving for beginners. It'll be easier to learn these concepts in Octave and transfer them to C++ later, where the same ideas apply in both environments. With that said, let's go ahead and get started with some examples in Octave. So first things first, you'll need to download Octave from the GNU website. I'll provide a link here on the video and in the description so you can go and download the application. I recommend you run the new version 4. Uh, it has some new GUI features that'll make it easier for all you first-time users. I'm going to be running Octave on Mac OS, but it works fine on Mac, Windows, and Linux. I recommend you get the binary installer package, but you can also use a package manager like Homebrew or apt-get or whatever exists on your platform. So let's go ahead and get started and open Octave. I'm going to go to my applications and click octavegui.app. So it might freak out for a minute, but when it finally comes up, you'll see something like this. So if you don't see a command window, labeled command window here, that says GNU Octave and some copyright business here, first go to window, reset default window layout, and hopefully it'll pull up the command window. Otherwise you can go to window, see command window, and all of the other graphical features here. So let's get started with a few examples of doing math in Octave. Octave is super good at doing math, and it can do all kinds of different operations. So for example, we can do order of operations with parentheses, addition, multiplication, and all kinds of operations. So if we do, in parentheses, 1 plus 2 plus 3 divided by 5, we can hit enter in order to evaluate that and see that we get 1.2 is the answer, which is correct. Note that we're using the plus sign for addition and the forward slash for division. We can also define variables inside Octave. If we want to name a value and use it later, we can do something like this. For example, we might want to save a value inside x. It's a common thing to use. So we can assign the value 2 to x using x equals 2. If we hit enter, we can see that x comes up, and in our workspace, x now has the value 2. We can now use the symbol x in order to do other operations. So if we want to multiply x by 2, we can type x asterisk 2 in order to multiply it. And you can see we get the answer 4 back. If at any time you want to clear your screen in Octave and return to a blank command window, you can type clc enter. And as you can see, it clears our screen, so now we don't have all that junk from before. So all of those first examples were great, but they only operate on a single number at a time. In audio, we're going to need to operate on a whole bunch of numbers in order to do the DSP algorithms that we want. And Octave gives us a lot of tools that make that handy. You can define what's called a vector um, in order to do an operation on a bunch of numbers at a time. So if we use brackets and say bracket, left bracket one, comma two, comma three, end bracket, 
or the right bracket, and hit enter, you can see we've created a vector with three elements, the numbers one through three. We can do math on this vector every element at a time. So for example, if we put in one, two, three again, and add five to all of it, you can see that we get one plus five, two plus five, and three plus five to get six, seven, eight. This works great if we only want to do a few elements in our vector, but very quickly it would get tedious to write out every number that we want to use. So Octave gives us the colon operator, which lets us define a range of numbers all at a time. So you can say one colon three, hit enter, you can see that it returns the same thing as if we defined the vector using the bracket notation. This lets us do operations on more numbers at a time. So, for example, if we wanted to add 5 to the numbers 1 through 10, we could first generate the vector 1 to 10 in parentheses in order to ensure that we're not adding numbers to the vector limits, plus 5. You can see that we get 6 through 15, which would be the same thing as adding 5 to the numbers 1 through 10. We can also change the amount that is incremented in between each element in the vectors by using a different notation. So for example, if we say 0 colon 0 0.5 colon 2, this will give us a vector where every element is separated by 0.5. If we push enter here, it will return 0, 0 0.5, 1, 1.5, and 2.0. Let's clear this. Now we need to talk a little bit about trigonometry. If you will remember from high school math, the sine function gets us the angle with respect to different parts of a right triangle. So this ends up being really important in audio processing so that we can generate our sine wave. For example, if we give octave the sine of zero, it will return zero. Note that the sine function here uses radians and not degrees. So for example, if we want to get the sine of 0 0.5 times pi, or pi over 2, will return 1. Now we can get the sine of numerous elements at a time too. For example, if we wanted to do four elements through one cycle of sine, we might say sine of pi times 0 increment by 0 0.5 to 2 will return a sine wave with five elements in it. 0, 1, 0, negative 1, and 0. It says negative 0, but it's the same thing as 0. It just means it's a super small negative number. We'll pretty frequently need to operate on vectors that are much longer than this, though. For example, we might do this instead. Sine of pi times, starting at 0, increment by 0 0.01 to 2. Now, it will give us this screen where you can scroll down by pushing J, you can see that we've been given 201 elements in our sine wave now by incrementing by 0 0.01. We can draw a graph of this using the plot function. Plot sine pi times vector starting at 0, increment by 0 0.01 to 2, close all the parentheses. You can see here is one cycle of our sine wave with 200 elements in it. Let's clear the screen now and get started in making our sine wave tone. First, we'll need to define the sampling rate that we want to work at. As I mentioned earlier, we will be using 44.1 kilohertz. And I will label this with the comment hertz. The percent sign here shows that this bit and everything after it is a comment meaning that it's not actually code, and we can just write any message to ourselves that will help us remember what's happening here. So for example, we could say hertz, hz, is the unit for sampling rate. If we push enter here, you'll also notice that the value wasn't echoed after we wrote this line. That's because we put the semicolon in here, which keeps the value from being returned to the screen after we enter a line. So now we have the variable fs, which contains the value 44,100. That will be the sampling rate for our sine wave. We also want to make the frequency of the sine wave one kilohertz. So let's make ourselves another variable called freak. Give it a value 1,000. Now this is also the unit hertz, so we can put a comment there that says hertz. 
Now let's go ahead and generate the tone. Let's make a new variable called tone that will contain this. And we will need to calculate the sine of two pi, since this is in radians, times the frequency one kilohertz times, now we're gonna make a vector of the input samples here from one to fs, which will mean one to 44,000 samples, which will represent one second of time in our resulting tone. Then we will need to divide by the sampling rate. Semicolon at the end to keep it from echoing the value. So if you didn't totally follow some of the math in here, that's okay, we'll go over it a little bit more in future videos. I just wanna get you as fast as possible to writing an example. Now that we've generated our tone that represents the vector of the sine samples, let's go ahead and write it to a file. We can use the function wave write, W-A-V, as in the file type, W-R-I-T-E, in order to do that. So the first argument to wave write is the tone that we've generated. Let's put that in there first, and then comma, our sampling rate, 44.1 kilohertz, and then the name of the file that we want to generate. So let's call this testtone.wave. We'll need to start this with a single quotation mark in order to indicate that this is a string, meaning it contains text information. So single quotation mark, test-tone.wave, and end it with another single quotation mark. We'll put in another parentheses to end the wave write function and a semicolon. So it looks like our tone has been generated. Now I'm just going to pull up Finder and go to the directory that's listed in current directory, which will be users slash Dan, my home directory. So I'm just going to pull up the regular Finder window from the dock. You can use any file explorer available on your system and then find testtone.wave. So you can see here that this is the tone that we generated. Let's listen to it. And there's our one kilohertz sine wave. That brings us to the end of our tutorial for today. Hopefully you learned a lot about how to generate our sine wave function. This one kilohertz sine wave may not sound that interesting on its own, but remember that this is the foundation for a lot of other techniques in audio DSP. In the future, we'll use this code as the basis for a lot of other ideas. Thanks for watching this video. If you have any feedback, please leave it in the comments. Or if you have any questions about what I did today, feel free to leave those as well. Please subscribe to the channel and I'll see you back next time.